When I was about eight years old, the music teacher asked me if I wanted to play the cello, and I had no idea what a cello was. <laughs> so I wish I could go back and ask her, and I think it's because I was tall. That's the only thing I can think of. It never occurred to me that I could stop playing the cello, and I just loved it immediately. We moved around a lot, and I think playing the cello was the one thing that was always the same. My environment would change, my friends would change, but I still had the cello. I remember um, I had my cello lessons in the storage closet of the school, so I was in this little closet surrounded by stacks of paper and books, and you know, there I am with the cello, and it was really hard to find room to bow because you know, you'd hit textbooks and stuff. I love that feeling of getting swept up just in sound and music. And that feeling of being a cellist in the middle of a hundred people who are playing a piece of music. And you just get swept up like in this wave. I always wanted to capture that feeling. You're sort of in this three-dimensional landscape of sound. And that's really where I like to be with my music. Like when I'm on stage, that's where I am. I'm not on stage in front of you. I'm in this landscape of sound. see the way the music happens, but that's not seeing people playing it, and that's not seeing somebody conducting it, and that's not seeing an audience watching it. It's very much like this, this feeling of what does the sound look like? The sweep of the sound, the way it moves up and down, or the way it moves forward, it's rushing forward. Because my music is very much about getting outside and looking in, I often need to go places in order to get out of my head. <laughs> so it might be that I have to go out to the coast to look at the view, or I might just walk through the city and see the people and just sort of observe. To do that, I do have to often get away, because as you can see, I live here in the forest. <laughs> and um, there's not a lot of people around. And also, the forest can be very tight. So I like to go out and like, you know, pull back and look at things. people say like what do you do I find it a really difficult question because well what I do yeah I play the cello and I use technology but that's just sort of this thing that happens on the surface really I'm like creating a world you know and it's really hard to say what it is but it is a world of feeling and of motion and color and light and I think that you can't actually describe it with words because you know, that's why it's music <laughs> Music is this thing that happens in a moment of time, and that moment of time only happens once. And it doesn't matter if you try to play it exactly the same, whatever is going on with you at that moment is different than it was the day before. So it's never the same. And that's wonderful, and it's also an incredible tragedy because that one perfect moment that I'm having is now gone. When I'm working on a soundtrack to a film, I like to get the footage from the director without sound and to hear what kind of atmosphere he wants to create. How does he want the audience to feel? And then I'll play the footage and I might improvise along with it and try to create that same experience that he wants. I wrote this music to go with the film and then afterwards I was really inspired by this, this concept of this primeval swamp and so he gave me some footage to play along with on stage. 
I just love that, the idea that I've created this musical world and then you're going to create a visual world. <laughs> and it perpetuates and it goes on and on and on and on, like with one person influencing another, influencing another. So that's when I really feel like I'm, I was most successful. Music is, for me, a way to communicate with the world. It's a way to describe what I'm seeing and how I perceive the world. Everything that I'm thinking about, looking at, it's like music is a description of, it, it is my visual life.